Welcome back to Uplink. I'm Andrew <laughs> Hamilton. That's the most energy you're gonna get out of me. And that's Roy uh, Nogletree, and he's probably I. feeling about the same. Yeah, absolutely. We're not <laughs> tired and worn down at all. Yeah, no, you know, this has not been a very long week full of editing and writing and mm -mm. playing uh, so many video games. There's a lot of video games out, and there's a lot of video game news, and you've come to the only place on the internet where you can find out about it. Stop Googling that. Just trust me, okay? All right, uh, we got a lot to talk about. We're gonna get into a, a departure from uh, a legacy uh, studio. We're gonna talk about an upcoming game from a relatively, I don't wanna say new studio, they've been around for a while. They're celebrating their 20th anniversary. But we'll talk about a new AAA title coming up in the PlayStation library. We've got some uh, news about post-launch stuff for the Midnight Suns. We're gonna talk about Kanye West, unfortunately. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, some other Remakes and remasters coming down the line. Let's do it. All right, so let's get into the first one uh, where I must announce for the first time anyone's ever hearing this uh, exclusively. Uh, Hadn't already Hill. been written about it, which is how we found out yeah, about it. Yeah, we definitely aren't uh, citing Game Informer's article here. Mm -hmm. um, Sefton Hill and uh, Jamie Walker are the co founders of Rocksteady Games, who made the Batman Arkham series of games, are officially departing the studio following the. Uh, finalization of Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Game I'm really excited for. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of it recently. but I uh, haven't seen any gameplay of it? We've seen some gameplay. We saw one gameplay trailer. Okay. But we haven't seen anything in recent memory. But, uh, you know, this is kind of a big deal because uh, for the longest time, when I think of the Arkham games, I was thinking Sefton Hill as the, the director of those games. Um, this is kind of a big deal to see someone with that kind of scope and talent moving on, both of them. Uh, from a company they founded? Yeah, from the, it, it's so weird whenever you, you hear that the founders of a game studio are leaving. It's not like, I don't know, it, it doesn't have the same kind of weirdness or like kind of mundaneness like when it's leaving other companies. Well, when a, yeah, when a CEO steps in that's been there for a long time and then all, it's like, if Tim Cook was tomorrow was like, oh, I'm gonna be like, okay. Yeah, because uh, you know, it's not his thing. Like when Steve yeah. Jobs mm -hmm. left, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. When Bill Gates retired at, from being CEO of Microsoft, that was a big deal. But this is, you know. It's not on those levels, yeah, like, but, it, but it's the, when I think you found it's the a more company. creative that, like the more creative focused a company is, it becomes weirder to think about that company not having that creative Vocal ends, right? Um, I don't know what like the when a studios... lead singer leads a band. Yeah, though I will say that they have a good talent underneath them. They've got a couple of people coming in to fill those roles that have been with the company for a long time, and I wish them all the best luck. Um, I think this is kind of like a George Lucas, Dave Filoni kind of situation where you know you train your your uh, protege up, and then now they're ready to take on the yeah. the full reign, so don't have to worry about it. Well, I mean. Might as well go out with a bang. I have a feeling that that, that Suicide Squad game is going to be... It can't be worse than Gotham Knights, I'll tell you that much. Well, we were, we, yeah, you got a review coming out about that, but and, and they weren't responsible for that game, so no. like... Warner Bros. Montreal did that, and shame on you. <laughs> Just kidding. Ugh. But, you know, um, uh, we'll get to it in the review. You'll see. No, I, I think... We were talking off camera about the merger between, and we've talked about it on this show, about the merger between um, Discovery and Warner Brothers. W Warner Brothers Interactive has kind of been on its own for like a long time. Like all these subsections of Warner Bros yeah. and um, who? Uh, Discovery? Discovery, but no, it, 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 I forget who. It wasn't Viacom, Viacom is CBS, but um, an overall parent company owns Warner Brothers on top of all of that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, it's sort of like been operating under its own thing and doesn't really have to work with the tie-ins of whatever that, right. whatever weird merger that Warner Brothers interacted, or what, yeah. like, I mean, whatever they do they're have, doing. They do have control over it, but it's not, Yeah. I think they, I just like Disney, they don't understand that side of their market, so they're just letting the people who have been doing it keep doing it. I would I, I would imagine that this didn't have anything to do with their departure. We yeah. don't know that, but like... They've been there for a long time. I mean, the first Arkham game came out, what, 2006, 2007? I mean, that's a long time to be doing that. Um, 
Ugh. Maybe maybe been after that. Maybe. Makes no, me I feel think it was old. 2007. Makes me feel old. Um, so it's been a long time of them being in the game, and uh, you know I think that they're ready to move on to non-Batman because once you make a Batman game, you're kind of stuck well. If you make Batman like, stuff, you is know? like not for it's the most successful. Um, yeah. Well, and it redefined superhero the franchise, superhero genre. Like it's yeah. For the long up until Arkham Asylum's release, for the longest time, video games struggled to depict superheroes in a fun way. And Arkham, uh, the Arkham series just completely reinvented what Batman was to a, a whole generation of players. Um, and I think it's stuff like that that has persisted the, the brand name of Batman. I think, you know, I've heard it said before that like if you didn't put Batman content out for 15 years, people would still know who Batman is. And I think it's because there's persistently like good stuff that, that permeates forever and always as one of the, the, the keystones of a particular genre. Yeah, I just think it is like, it is, we've seen it try to be replicated and it has been often copied but not yeah. well done. Um, and plus the, yeah, like those games, uh, again, I haven't played all the way through all of them. So uh, the, if you watch the show, you know that. But um, I have played them enough to know like, Oh, this is something new and something different. When they it's gonna be something going across the bottom here that just says sh hashtag shame. Shame. Royden. Royden doesn't play video games. <laughs> um, uh, I have played them enough to know when something is good. Right. And they obviously admitted something that was uh, uh, genre defining, genre right. not even bending, genre defining. Um, so yeah, and being stuck in that permanent loop mm -hmm. of having to constantly. Yeah up your nine out of 10 game right. with another Batman game, you know what yeah, I mean? Well, then you can't even do anything really and new. And you can't just take that concept and apply it to other DC superheroes. I know a lot of people were like, oh, they should make a Superman game. It wouldn't work the it, same. But it's not the same thing. Those characters aren't the same. You can't depower Superman at the beginning of every game like you can with Batman where you can say, oh, he lost his utility belt, you know? Or his bat suit, he's, he's in prison now, so he doesn't have all this technology with him. Like, it's not... You can't do that to, to Superman. So I think that th this is probably for the best for them career-wise, and also I think that uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they go on to next. Uh, maybe they get away from superhero video games altogether. They've been in the game a long time. And speaking of people who have been in the game a long time, let's go on to our next subject. Uh, PlayStation London Studios celebrates its 20th anniversary with new info on their upcoming exclusive game, the be PS5. Be beautiful script read. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So we found out a little bit about, um, and we had heard a while ago that there are close to 20-something games being worked on by uh, first-party studios over at PlayStation. Uh, and one of the ones that we had heard about a little bit was that there was a AAA possibly multiplayer fantasy focused game from uh, PlayStation London Studio. Um, this is the first kind of any details they've actually like officially put out. Uh, this is gonna be a, a weird one. We don't know a whole lot. We know it's gonna be, excuse me. We know it's gonna be uh, fantasy focused. We know it's gonna be multiplayer. And we know it's gonna be set in modern day London. That's about all we know. We saw a picture of a dragon over the uh, the London Bridge, or it mm -hmm. might not have been the London Bridge. The, the fake London Bridge. Yeah, the other one that looks like the, the, you think is the London Bridge, but isn't the London Bridge. Every bridge could be the London Castle Bridge. Castle Bridge. Yeah, there you go. Um, I know things. It's, I mean, if you, I'm, I don't think you have a PSVR unit. I don't have a PSVR unit either. And I was gonna tell you, but, I may never. Yeah. I. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, those are some. There's some things when you reach a certain age that you just like. like that's not. For I'm me. just not doing it anymore. That's so, not I, like, for I, me. it makes me sound like I'm <laughs> I'm a thousand years old. But Royden like, is somewhere between forty and ninety years old. Yeah. So I like. There's just a certain thing, especially with the um, Oculus headset that my brother-in-law yeah. had. I put it on and I was trying to. It's, I was like flaring around like an everyone. idiot. It takes. It takes a lot. I'm sitting here going like, I look. Ridiculous. 
I'm too self-conscious. I'm too old and self-conscious to like. Yeah, that's the worst part. I you gotta mean, have no shame. You gotta be young and have no well, shame. Well, it's it's good for if you're at home and you have lots of space and no one else is home. But like, yeah, I mean, if you're I got dogs, I got cats. If, if you've got people who can see you, like if you got big windows or something like that, yeah, I, I'm not getting a. We were on a walk right in our neighborhood, and uh, I mean, all of the all the houses. It's a planned community. All the houses are stacked on top of each other. Um, and you can just see into people's houses. Yeah. Like, and we were walking by, and this kid had his blinds all the way up, and he was just, he was, he, just, he, he just had the headset on, doing beat and just, just all, and it was just <laughs> opening the window to the public. I, if I did that, I would. There, that you're like, oh, that's funny. Me, they'd be like, that grown man is playing. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's VR. like I've heard a thousand times that v the reason VR has trouble taking off in the market is because there's no way to visually market VR in a way that doesn't look stupid. <laughs> Everyone who's do look, and the, if you're going to get into VR, I need you to understand, you look stupid. It's going to look stupid, and you just have to accept that. There's no way to put a big bulky headset on your head and two weird little... Controllers, just say controllers. Objects into yeah. your hands. Controllers. They're controllers, kind of. Uh, well, and they got the weird like, do 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 kind of triggers. ones. Triggers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the the grippy ones. Um, <laughs> this is not better. <laughs> let's let's but power through. We got it. There's not there's not a way to do those things and not look ridiculous. That's why every marketing image, every commercial, is some dude being like. With a with a headset on, like Ugh! it just it looks dumb every time, and you're always gonna look dumb. And I'm sorry, but it is actually kind of fun, which is why I'm excited for PlayStation okay. London Studios. At the very end of the day, it is fun because they I just look they made London uh, Heist, which was a fantastic VR launch title for the original PSVR. They haven't really done much since. Um, I did not know until today that they've been around for 20 years. <laughs> so uh, they've. That happens more than you think. They made the SingStar games, uh, karaoke games, which I, I'm sure you've seen a thousand of them on shelves at every GameStop ever, because there are like 50 of those a year. But I, that's crazy to me that they, they are now making a AAA fantasy game. But hey, man, achieve your goals. I hope it's good. Yeah, um, one thing about this, London, an underused setting, for games in the modern day, yeah, you have all the all. I mean, Watch Dogs had a had a. It's like near future though. Yeah, well, Watch Dogs Legion. Um, we explored Victorian London and Syndicate. There are so many like old Victorian, like old London yeah, games, like The wants Order. To replicate that, that and every style. everybody loves that. Modern day London, uh, it like it's the same as New York. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's yeah. like well, people and, forget. And unrelated to any of this, but. Like, legitimately, I hope a good chunk of the James Bond game being done by the guys who did Hitman yeah. is set in London. I hope it's, like, internal espionage, like, yeah. ca counter-espionage, you know, almost. London, like, yeah, you would think, if you don't know, London, huge city. Yeah, like, lots of lots, lots of, places. of places to go. Uh, and, you know, there's, like, a brief section of that in Modern Warfare. I, I don't know, we're getting way off topic, but... It's yeah. mainly you're just waiting on the on the train and you're stuck in traffic. Right, which is what every game should be. Yeah. Um, I hope that's what this game is GTA about. GTA Houston. You and the dragon trying to get on onto the train and you're just like, is this us? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Uh, now we're on the we're we're on on the, the, green, the green B path train. Yeah. We can't take this one. Dang it. This doesn't go where we need. And he's... <laughs> First look at... Uh, that's that's coming out at an undetermined time. But yeah, well, what isn't no coming out at that a, later? <laughs> undetermined time. Midnight Suns. We got a first look at post-launch plans. Yeah, so games, DLC games out December second. Or Midnight Suns. So we will uh, we know what the core cast of characters looks like, and I definitely could name them all, but I, I'm like I'm not, not going to. You gotta. You, you, you just have to trust us. You already know. We got like with uh, mm -hmm. ca Captain America. Captain America and Urn Man and <laughs> Urn Man. Uh, He's like an urn. Spooter Spider and the Witch. Cat Dude. Cat? No, I don't. Th what, Black Panther? I think Black Panther is in the yeah. is in the I don't, game. I don't know if he's in the game. Doc Doctor Weird's in there. Uh, Doctor Weird. <laughs> they got uh, Nurse Upsetting. Psychotic Blade Lady. 
Uh, this bit's going on for too long. Winter Badger. Winter. <laughs> All right, I'm out. I'm, I'm out of good Winter Assassin. Uh, there's, um, a, there's a good core number. Of, I think there's 18 or something like that total characters. Blades in there. You know, you've got all, all kinds of good stuff. But we finally got uh, this last couple days, Deadpool took over the social media account of course. Uh, for Midnight Suns and started a campaign to get Deadpool into Midnight Suns. And then he threatened the company that makes Midnight Suns to leak all the post-launch content if they didn't put him in the game, and then when they didn't put him in the game, at first he was just like, all right, well, here we go. Venom's in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Storm's in the game. Uh, and I'll put up the goofy art that he, like, right, like, he's like, here's a drawing I did of Storm in the game, and it's like a third grader drew it, which is on brand. Uh, it's Morbin time. Morbin time. They actually said that um, months after that meme's been dead, they resurrected it. it, much like a vampire rising from from its uh, its death. Because uh, if I know things that get, get the kids going, it's maymays. It's so many. It's such old maymays. Hey, 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 boys and girls, don't don't touch a my spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> it's me. How do you do, fellow children? <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> um, I, I like that that got you so I good. Don't know, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, the, the, kids are, uh, the kids are totally doing, doing the morb. You know, yeah. th they're also, I don't know if you know this, they're so, showing up the suits to uh, the minions. Yeah, which I plan to show up in a suit to the Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns for lunch. Right. Um, no, I think... Which dumb name? The sun's not out at midnight. Look at this guy. Um, so explain real quick. Explain what Midnight Sun like. How is it? It's a top down. So game? it's kind of yeah. I mean it's like a fly in the wall kind of perspective of the whole thing. But it's it's like XCOM style tactical uh, RPG right. with like these ability cards thrown in. You build mm -hmm. a team. You level up their abilities. You also make a custom hero uh, called the Hunter, who's out there hunting these demonic entities that have been unleashed by opening, I assume, Pandora's box. But it is more of a card. It is yeah. more of a turn-based card it's, game. It's turn-based, card-driven, but not a card. Like you don't collect cards for characters. You collect abilities per characters okay. that are cards that then you get dealt a hand basically at the start of each character's turn. Um, which you know gives you a way to stack out abilities better. Which in reality, I just ever ever if we had to watch a movie of the Midnight Suns based on the video game, I hope that they keep the combat system of, ha of every character having to pull out a stack of cards and be like, um, "Sorry guys, uh, Wolverine, I don't, I don't have your claw yeah. card this time. Uh, you, you can't use you, the only thing you're known for." <laughs> speaking of card games, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> somehow. Uh, some for some reason ban Kanye West. Um, yeah, I from p competing in tournaments. Okay. So, Kon Konami, I don't want to, but just come here for a second. Did he compete? Is he a? Does, what, is he a master? Does he have the God cards? Zodia? Is, is he got Exodia? Is he is he the forbidden one now? Have you given him more power by accident? I have a, I have a terrible joke that I'm going to tell you off camera. Okay. <laughs> I just, I need to know there's not enough context. All, it just says he's banned till April 7th of 2057, but why is he banned? I know why you banned, I get it. He, awful things he's saying, he's a bad man, but I, what's this, to prove a point, you're like, look at us. We preemptively banned it feels, Kanye West. It feels like, sorry, he previously known as Kanye West. Okay. Um, it feels like a bit, but when you do a bit about a very serious topic, 
Yeah. Like, so you I, have to pivot into the, no, we're serious about this. Yeah, well, so, like, you got two options here. You either take it back and be like, sorry, that was in poor taste, bad timing. I thought it was funny, but it turns out everyone hates this that I yeah. did. Or you double down super hard and you go, like, no, for no real. seriously, and we put Mussolini and Hitler on there, too, <laughs> just to <laughs> cover the bases. <laughs> you just get real double down. Yeah, we just triple down on all. Donald like, Trump has been banned from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering. What? For no reason, he does not care about these things, but we've banned him. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, like, if you haven't followed the news, Kanye, Kanye West uh, made anti-Semitic remarks and has since been uh, dropped by Everyone. all, all it, 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 most if not all of his branding Yeah, like 90% of his, his um, money is gone. Including, you know, including Adidas, including, um, all of his, he was, he had a, he had a sports uh, he was, agency called Don to Sports. All of his clients are dropping mm -hmm. him now. Messed up money for himself and a lot of folks. I um, had heard that his manufacturers were trying to pull out of producing his clothes. So, I mean, he's like showing up to the Skechers. to the Skechers headquarters and like, let me in! But, uh, Which, I, not funny, but has a very kind of similar, funny. it's a little funny, not the anti-Semitism stuff, but no. the, the, the aftermath. Um, it does have similar vibes to the commercials of Crash Bandicoot being outside the Nintendo headquarters being like, hey Nintendo! Um, I think, uh, I, I just don't, I, I, I don't, I, don't under, I don't understand, Konami. I don't Konami. Know what, what are you doing? What is the... You announced seven Silent Hill things, and then you ban Kanye West from, from Yu-Gi-Oh! These things It are feels like so cloud chasing, I, and I, I don't mean, it want to, it... But they didn't make a... I don't want it to be that, because weird, that's bad. The weird thing is that they didn't make like a PR announcement. They didn't send out a press release about this. Someone just happened to be viewing the banned persons list on Konami's site and was like, wait, what? And then started sending that out all over the place, and I, I went and looked, and yeah, his name's on there. He's on. He's at the top of the list right now, and I'm just like, but I mean, if maybe you Kunani's tell just people, in the business of retroactively banning people. Like, maybe they're just like, I heard he might be low on money, and he's planning to to get into. Yeah, to we were joking about this yesterday because if we know one thing, it's uh, if you're low on money, all of a sudden you start. Getting real big into trading cards yeah. and crypto. You get and real that's big probably into trading cards first, net. which is a massive investment if you want to, you know, keep up with it. Um, and then you you get really good at the game and you go and earn a lot of money at tournaments, and then you start investing in crypto. That is the only transition mm -hmm. left for you once you reach the bottom. Donda coin is coming soon. Oh God. No, I I I, I don't know. Maybe. I'm not gonna say that. No, <laughs> I got a joke I'll make to you later. <laughs> we're, we're both already. In we're trouble. not. Look, <laughs> what he said was bad and wrong. Yeah, and he this should, is just a weird story. I just I couldn't help but include this because it it felt so strange and out of the blue. Not out of the blue though. Like it makes sense from like. I feel like if this had been anything other than Yu-Gi-Oh and they banned him, I would have been like, yeah, I mean, obviously. But like, it was Yu-Gi-Oh, which he's never, <laughs> I've never heard about him expressing I've never intent to be involved in Yu-Gi-Oh. Never heard of him having like a blue eyes white dragon card. <laughs> he's, he's, he's just like. He's never like, y'all, Slyther goes hard though. Like, <laughs> he's never like. Anyway. Just, uh, it's so weird. Uh, magician. Um, <laughs> Fallout, that's, I'm just naming Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I remember. Fallout 4 is getting a next-gen version with free upgrade to celebrate its 25th anniversary. Yeah, so... Uh, this for is, free? Like, are they, wait... It sounded like they were planning to do a free upgrade for this, but I've also seen that that's not been 100% confirmed. I have not... Mm -mm. It's weird because they just did a, a special edition re 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 release of New Vegas. Uh, no, of Skyrim. Oh right. And, and no, New Vegas doesn't get any love. It should, but they they don't. Um, but it's it. They released that and they charged like thirty dollars to get the upgrade from the regular special edition to this version. And then they released the full thing as a, as a $60 game. And I'm like, from 2011? That, that Skyrim? Oh, I'm just waiting for okay. the Oblivion. Re, 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 oh, re, 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 re. Oh, uh, it's coming. 
Um, but so, I mean, I don't know if anyone was actually asking for this. I assume that this could be a patch if they wanted it to be. Yeah. But I think to celebrate, they'll probably do a well, physical Fallout and 4, digital release. Yeah, Fallout 4 was free on, it's free on most it's, PlayStation 5s, right? I think it was part of the PS collection. Maybe. I know it's on Game Pass. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaking that for... I uh, guess it's for sure with the Bethesda stuff on Game Pass. Yeah, I mean, but, I had it downloaded from, from the PS4, so I think it yeah. transferred over. I, I think this is cool if you are already a Fallout fan. Uh, it would give you a new way to play the game at a higher fidelity. I don't know what kind of improvements they're really planning to make. Uh, I do think it's funny though that it listed bug fixes <laughs> as an, oh, as an inclusion. I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to fix those. You've been trying to do you're that. You're supposed for, to fix those ahead of time. Been trying to do that since 2018. God, can you imagine we get to the dystopian future of next year? 2016. And, <laughs> and they just start releasing new versions of the game for full price every time they need to fix a bug. They're just like, ah, oh, we just give it another a bug. one. We got it. You got to buy the new version if you want. The, if you want five the bug bucks. free version. It's like a toll. Oh God, we're get, it's gonna happen. That's the next microtransaction. Probably, we're yeah. Now. Get, where the bug fixes cost if 25 NFTs cents. If NFTs get get added to anything, it's gonna be you. You got to buy the NFT that gets you the unlock code for patches. Look, I'm kind of a Fallout 4 defender. I played that yeah. game a lot. Um, people hate it. I, I mean, I know a lot of people I, don't like it. And people, I think people, I, which surprised me because I was like, it was getting yeah. pretty fun. But it wasn't Fallout 3, so people kind of pooped their pants a little bit. Yeah, it, well, I think it was or was more, it wasn't New Vegas? Like people. It was more that it went too hard in some areas that weren't part of what people considered to be the Fallout stuff. And its narrative wasn't initially as good but i think the biggest thing that hurt it was that it came out even buggier than three and right and new vegas uh, did and for some people that meant not being able to play the game at all well yeah uh, that I, I think it's flopped now people really do like the game a lot now that on top of it's it that animation style in yeah. in general it looked makes dated. for some weird bugs like yeah. i i think it's i think fallout 4 is the game that made Bethesda realized that they needed to update their engine and why Starfield is looking drastically different to a certain degree. Um, because it's like Fallout 4 compared to other games released at the same time did not look like it was anywhere near on the same le level. Whereas like Skyrim released alongside a bunch of games that yeah. all looked of a similar, you know, it level. Looks, yeah. So uh, this is great. For if you love those things, I don't think this will get like a whole lot of new fans in on the game series. I might but, try it out again. I mean, sure, if if it's free, I'll yeah. for sure try it out. If it's gonna cost me fifty dollars, you can just eat a bag of manure. That's the one you were looking for. Uh, Witcher One. Speaking of games that uh, look like they're from two thousand and three. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? I take that back. I watched. Because I'd never play, I played The Witcher Three, but I never played One and Two. Mm -hmm. And I went back and I like somebody did a replay of it all the way back in like 2018 and uploaded like a it, full replay. It looks replay. pretty good. Honestly. It's not bad for. It a looks game. like Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah, it's not I mean, bad for a game that came out when. 2000. Oh, I don't know. 2006. It's like an Xbox 360 maybe? game, right? 2007. I don't even know that it came. I think the first no, Witcher one was Three PC came out on Xbox Three. Witcher 1 uh, getting a full remake I think on Unreal. Witcher 2 came out on 360, and Witcher 3 came out on Xbox One and all the that generation. But I, I think I think the first Witcher was PC exclusive. You're probably right. Witcher 1 is getting a full remake on Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, so this is a big deal uh, for multiple reasons. So unlike the Fallout 4 remaster thing, this will be a full-fledged from the ground up uh, remake of The Witcher 1. Uh, which means that we'll get to see uh, modern day combat, modern day aesthetics. The story of the first Witcher game is is pretty well regarded. Um, the the design of the world is well regarded. I think we could even see some expansion to those things. Yeah, it um, was uh, Microsoft Windows and OS X. Yeah, so it. Uh, I think that this is this is going to be a a great way for people who maybe bounced off The Witcher Three because it was a little more intensive. Mm -hmm. to get uh, a good entry point. But also, there's not, a, and this is a, a current problem that could persist throughout the entirety of the industry, but there's not a good way to be able to play, unless you have a, like, a, like a decent PC, to be able to play the entire Witcher trilogy all in one place. If you're right. on console like most you know, people I know, then there's just there's no way 
to play all three of those games. So I think it would be cool to see a Witcher 1 and then maybe even a Witcher 2 remake. Um, luckily, I, I was concerned because, you know, we had heard reports that CD Projekt Red were uh, reworking their work schedules and stuff to avoid crunch and... Uh, and the 18 new Witcher yeah. content and then they games announced, that they have coming out. They <clears throat> announced, like, six new projects all on a massive scale, a, a sequel to Cyberpunk, you know, a new Witcher trilogy of games. While they're and still I was working like, on Cyberpunk. Yeah, I mean, Cyberpunk's basically done now. Now they're working on DLC, but the game the game runs fantastically now. But it's... Um, I was concerned that they were adding another project and that that might result in more crunch or that they shouldn't have announced it now if it wasn't going to be out till 2029. Um, but it sounds like this is being handled by... Not sounds like it is being handled by uh, Foolish Games, I think is the name of the company. Um, and this is, they're, they're working in tandem with the original uh, Witcher team a little bit to get um, a full version of the game out without having to involve CD Projekt Reddit with anything other than publishing it. So this is a, a great chance for them to reintroduce this series to people who haven't had a chance to play it. Honestly, I, I have tried a thousand times to get through The Witcher 3. I enjoy the game, but I always eventually hit a wall where I'm just like, it is I the longest. Get it is into this. like people like continuously play Skyrim. It is the single longest game I think I've ever like yeah. encountered. Yeah, it, and it's it, huge. It, it feels massive. It feels daunting. You feel overwhelmed at times, and I and I think that's part of the reason why this is a good chance for them to scale it back a little bit. I hope what they don't do is go. Oh well, now we have all this chance to rebuild the whole world. Let's make it bigger and, and you know more. I don't want it stuff full of make it garbage. look make it make it look better. Add a look couple better, elements and just keep, keep the story. Keep it the same, but give me updated combat. Give me updated movement. Give me updates to the gameplay. But don't expand on the nonsense, extra stuff. I don't need games are so overly bulky. Not, not to shit on Gotham Knights for the fifteenth time today, but. That game suffers a lot from uh, over bulkiness uh, in terms of extra activities and stuff. There's a lot of grinding yeah. that doesn't feel natural. I don't want that in, in these kinds of remakes. So, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to it, honestly. I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. Obviously, we didn't get like any kind of reveal trailer or anything like this. This was just an announcement, but uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. Until and, 2024. Yeah, it's going to be a while, but I do think that it's going to be uh, a good one. Uh, and speaking of things that are good, it's still spooky season. Spooky season, graphic. I don't have a graphic. Oh. Uh, but I'll put something there that goes. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's spooky season. And uh, as much as the, the white girls, the pumpkin spice lattes who say that, uh, don't invoke images of spookiness. There are lots of horror games that are still left to come out this year. There's three in the next two months. Uh, so we've got The Chant coming up. Levi will be doing our review for that, so keep an eye out on that. That comes out uh, November 3rd, so just about a week from now. Uh, looking real culty, looking real action adventure focused, looking real mysterious, and looking very spooky. We love a good cult here in Waco, Texas. <laughs> yeah. Continue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and then in a similar vein, uh, we'll have uh, the uh, Dark Pictures Anthology next title, uh, which will be The Devil in Me or Devil with Me or Devil, the Devil. Oh, he's in there. Look out, it's the Devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name. Uh, he's going to get you. He's behind you. That's it's a long, very long title for this game, <laughs> uh, which is a kind of, until Dawn style, choose your own adventure sort of thing, but uh, set with a serial killer vibe. It fit, like I just was watching a trailer, a new trailer they put out today uh, about the game, and it is very Saw esque. Like it's, I mean, you're basically trapped in a mansion that's ran by a, a killer that you're trying to solve the mystery before you get murdered, and they showed some very gruesome scenes of, of death and destruction and Yay. murder and uh, uh oh. So if you want to get scared and also uh, do a shot every time someone makes a weird face, get some alcohol. Uh, like we were talking about before, the scariest thing that you can do on Halloween, of course, is get drunk and play uh, It Takes Two with your wife, a game about divorce. Um, and then every time she says, that's just like you, just take a shot. When she says, we need to talk, yeah, if, if the session ends with her putting the controller down quietly and standing up and say, can you come, can you come in here for a second? Yeah. Y you should probably take a shot. 
Spooky season. Yeah, spooky season. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's a Callisto protocol. Callisto protocol. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to remember the other thing that was on my. I'm, on I'm my pretty brain. sure that was it, but you didn't tell me. Dead space, but not dead space. Uh, from the dead space, but not of the dead space. You know what I'm saying? Of or related to dead space. There will be space, and there will be dead. But do not get these things conflated because there is. It is not the dead space. Does it look as menacing maybe as dead? I don't know. Have you seen enough gameplay? It looks very menacing. It looks menacing, but like dead space feels like it just insidious. Dead, dead space is like supernatural, like haunting, hunting you down almost kind of demon-like aliens. And this is more. Yeah, I feel like, but watching this gameplay, it feels like dead space feels like something is constantly over your shoulder. Yeah. This doesn't feel like that. This feels like more straightforward combat with scary monsters but yeah. like well and there's i think there's probably going to be some scares in there but i don't think that this is meant to give you in dead space you're an engineer yeah who who got caught up in this and at least in the first dead space game you're just an, you're just an engineer who's using basically a nail gun <laughs> to to fight zombies that don't die if you shoot them you know like it's yeah and this one like you got to like go for the head too yeah. because if you it, it'll well, oh, and some of them have this weird, like, you shoot them in the head and their head starts to reform with tentacles out the side, so. Yeah, I love uh, that. It's a good time and not horrifying, and it won't haunt your nightmares, so definitely play it. Um, but, you know, if you're looking for something that's out now, a um, couple of recommendations from me, uh, master of not playing very many horror games every year. Uh, I highly recommend that you go and check out The Quarry. Uh, see review icon here that you can click on to see Levi's review of it. It sounded like a good time. Uh, all the gameplay I've seen looks great. I've heard nothing but good things. Resident Evil 2 and 3 are pretty quick playthroughs. So if you're looking for some just Halloween chills, nothing like a good Resident Evil 2 and 3 uh, playthrough, especially ahead of the Resident Evil 4 remake uh, coming out next year. Also, um, until Dawn, is that still? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's Dawn. free to download, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, on, if you have PlayStation, PlayStation. Plus, you can get Until Dawn still. Um, and both the other Dark Picture uh, anthology, trilogy, whatever you want to call them. The other two, uh, Man of Medea, Median. Sure. The Man of Meridian. Uh, Medellin? Yeah, sure. That one. I don't know. It sounds right. The Medium Man. Yeah, uh, but there's also... Um, the the Friday the Thirteenth game, which I believe would be really fun. Like if you're looking to yeah, like got play with friends, friends that you can play with for sure. Same thing as for until or not until dawn, uh, <laughs> Dead by Daylight. Mm -hmm. Great one to play with your friends. Uh, great spooky times. Um, I know that uh, Fortnite has their uh, what is it, uh, Fort Nightmares. Yeah. Oh God, that's going on. If you've got children. If you don't, go get actually scared. Uh, <laughs> be an adult. Be an adult. Go out and do things you don't like to do, and then be scared about it. Right. Because if the get peer pressured into playing scary games. Because of the crushing weight of eternity and getting older doesn't scare you already. Add some other stuff. Oh, I know. Uh, your bills are due. No. <laughs> booga booga. Ah <laughs> uh, man. Good times, dead, dead and good times. I'm not oh, worried about man. those things yet. No just, one will uh, remember you. <laughs> You've left no mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, oh. we have fun here. Spooky we have season, fun. right, guys? Spooky season. Good Lord, I'm going to cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, Outlast. You should play Outlast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, uh, there's also a great new Ghostbuster game uh, that just came out. It's not really spooky per se, but it's in the Halloween spirit kind of. Did they come out with a new one? Yeah, oh. yeah. It was uh, written by uh, many members of the of the Busters. Follow, yeah, of the Busters. It's but it's got all the original Ghostbusters in it oh. uh, doing voices. Also, Greg Miller uh, is in it uh, of Kind of Funny Games. It was written by James and uh, Elise Willems, who are over at. Uh, Fun house, uh, so there's there's a lot of great talent buying it, a lot of really funny people working on it. Um, uh, Rahul Kulai, I'm sorry if I said your name badly, uh, who, if you've seen um, Midnight Mass, oh. was, was the Sheriff Hassan. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, he's, That is a, that is a wild, so speaking of spooky, that is, 
Me yeah. neither. Do you have any any spooky movie recommendations? Um, Barbarian is out now on HBO Max. Uh, Pretty good. Go Pretty check good. that out. I mean, don't can, watch anything about it and then go watch. Yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously though, it's I'm not like, going to put a trailer up. Or anything. Um, Halloween Ends is already out on. I mean, the, people haven't liked that that much, but it is already out on Peacock. Yeah, if you don't want to go, give home. it a try. Uh, shout out to Levi. Um, if you're really into horror, um, apparently Terrifier Two. Yeah, like you have to be really like I'm not. Big disclaimer right here, right here. Uh, do not go see this with anyone. Who is squeamish? Yeah, and don't or watch the you, first one if you're squeamish. Um, <laughs> apparently, the first one is free on like Freebie or something like that. Yeah. Um, but Terrifier Two uh, is apparently, a, and according to critics, like yeah. in, insanely good. Um, that one is out on that one's out in theaters for a limited Some time. Theaters. Yeah, and uh, I mean, people love Smile. That may be out on Paramount Plus. I already. think it's in theaters. It's right still now. in theaters. But uh, if you look for something that's not you know, in theaters, if you're not looking to go to the movie theaters, uh, if you haven't seen Hereditary or Midsummer, go watch those yep. immediately. Those are some of my favorite uh, horror movies. Uh, if you want something to, to kind of laugh at, go watch Malignant. Uh, if you missed that That's one, on HBO. go watch it. It's, 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 a, uh, it's I, a movie. It's a movie that happened. <laughs> um, also, shout out to, it, it, it's, a, it's also download. I think you can download it all a cart, but if you have like AMC Plus, you should have Shudder. Mm -hmm. Which is has a ton hundreds. of original film, yeah, hundreds. hundreds of original films, yeah, uh, that that have kind of sort of started to like redefine like what horror is, and those are all released on Shutter. But they also have all the classics, like mm -hmm. uh, like all most, if not all, of the Halloween films, uh, Friday the Thirteenth, and so on and so on. Um, yeah. so, so that's all. Lots of Shutter. spooky stuff to do. I hope. Uh, some of our recommendations, uh, aside from the stuff about debt and divorce, see. Uh, make you feel feel good about about spooky season. One more. I, there, He's I got think one it, more. I He's think it's called "See No Evil" or "Speak No Evil." Is that the one about the the female uh, exorcist? No, no, no. Okay, so it's called. Uh, it came out at Sundance, or it's called "Speak No Evil." Has eighty four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I believe it's on Shutter and Paramount Plus. It, it's apparently very upsetting. Yeah. So you guys think any uh, Halloween stuff over at One Take? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. We reviewed. We re, we did review Barbarian. We called it one of the best movies. I think that we saw this year. Um, my co-host Dex actually gave it like an A plus. Like oh, he nice, he nice. really enjoyed that movie. Um, I don't think that we're gonna review. Uh, we reviewed Black Adam, which was in its own way a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the hierarchy change in the DC universe. Oh, brother! Does it feel? Let changed? me let me tell you, it so redefined the genre of. I thought it of, might. of DC movies. You wouldn't even believe it. That shot of. Uh, when I say you wouldn't believe it, don't. Don't. He's lying. I'm all is lying. Man. Really stunk. Well, uh, I mean, we're going long. It's fine. Um, I think that that's that's was bound to happen with Black Adam. Uh, I, I was not. Not anticipating it being super great. It I just, wanted it, just, it to be good, but I just figured it wouldn't be. It just was just boring. Like, it just, not that, you know, a lot of action scenes, which yeah. people, you know, teach their own. It wasn't the worst. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It was just so, like, didn't do anything. Didn't do anything new. Didn't yeah. try anything new. Uh, yeah, and with a character with unique abilities, I, I feel like there should have been more to it. Yeah, he was also, yeah, The Rock, super OP, by the way. Yeah, which The Rock would only sign on to be a superhero if that superhero was super. Was, OP. like, was Superman. So, he's Superman. Yeah. He's, he's Superman with lightning. Yeah, so that's, take that but, for what, you may love it, eh. We do movies now here, apparently. Uh, exactly. But if you want to hear more about actual movie stuff, one take podcast, link in the description. <laughs> As always, uh, you can find uh, all the reviews I mentioned earlier in the show down there. You'll also find a review for PGA 2K23 from our boy Woo! Gordon right here. Also a video said game. It was a video game. It was a video and game. There was golf present, and that's all that really they had to nail was just getting a <laughs> golf ball in a video yeah, game. Yeah, you know what's funny is that um, last night I wrote the review, or I wrote the review like a couple, or earlier this week, and it was basically me explaining why I'm bad at video games. <laughs> but then last night, I finally, after playing it and writing the review and voicing the review and recording the stuff, I finally got good at the game. 
<laughs> I was like, well, all good. right, great. Editor's note, Royden's better now. I'm better at the game. <laughs> Royden improved. Most of the footage that we have is just me getting bogeys. <laughs> Love it. That's okay. I always clip out all the parts where I do poorly in video games and definitely don't accidentally leave in the parts where I do bad. Um, I'll also have a Modern Warfare 2 uh, campaign review. We'll be live streaming some of the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer tomorrow morning uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, and uh, I'll also have a Gotham Knights review up later this weekend. Uh, lots of content coming Ooh, up. Brother. We'll have several more reviews uh, in November. Uh, like I mentioned, The Chant, Dark Pictures, uh, Devil Boy, there he is, look out. Uh, <laughs> uh, God, He's of, you. God of War, Adult Boy. Um, uh, Pokemon's Red and, and Purple. Pokemane. Yeah, well. Actually, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll have tons of reviews out all throughout the rest of the year. Uh, we're doing the best we can to keep up with it. Small team, but we, we do our best. Uh, as always, you can uh, find me at Ham on Hardwired over on Twitter. You can subscribe to Hardwired here on KDB on KDBX on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Or you can find us here on YouTube if you're watching us on KWTX by searching Hardwired on KWTX over on YouTube. Uh, as for Royden, that's me. You can do your own stuff. I don't know. At Royden Ogletree. It's easy. That's it. That's it. It's the only one. And then uh -huh. One Take Podcast if you want to check At out. At One, the number one take pod. Go follow go. us. Uh, that's all we got for this week, though, guys. Thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you guys next time. We'll just, we're going to go back over here now because it was way more interesting. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Has that been here the whole the time? The whole time. Oh, man. That's the wrong logo. No. <laughs> <laughs>